So hello, welcome to the video and welcome to Africa. I'm in Spain today and I, well, no, hang on, Spain isn't in Africa, is it? I mean, I suppose the Canary Islands are quite close to Africa, even though they're still technically part of Europe constitutionally. But how can I be in Spain and in Africa at the same time? Well, dear viewer, Spain holds two very small specks of territory in North Africa, completely surrounded by Morocco. I'm in one of them today, Melicha, and I'm reliably informed that's how it's pronounced. The other being Ceuta, which is much further around the coast, very close to Gibraltar actually, and you can actually see it from Gibraltar, provided of course you know where to look. So even though this is an autonomous region within Spain, it is still constitutionally firmly part of Spain. The Spanish flag flies, people speak Spanish, and they are fiercely loyal. So much so that behind me here, you'll see an enormous border installation between Spain and Morocco designed to keep the thousands of people who would very much like to get into the EU firmly out. So I took the ferry across yesterday, you'll find that video elsewhere on the channel, and I've got a couple of days here and I've wanted to come here for quite some time. I love these sorts of geographical peculiarities. It also counts as a new territory for me in the Travellers Century Club, so we'll mark that one up. Check out this video if you want to see more about what all of that means. And if you'd like to see what it is like to spend a couple of days in Melicia, a little bit out of season, it's early October and there doesn't seem to be that much open, but if you'd like to see what the experience is like, stick around. Hi, I'm Matt. I've lived in five countries on four continents. I've flown over 1.4 million miles. I've visited over 100 countries, every American state, but I'm nowhere near done. So subscribe to see where I go next and perhaps get some inspiration for your next trip. Some facts and figures first. Melicia comprises only 4.7 square miles of land, which is nearly twice the size of Gibraltar, but is less than half the size of Ceuta. It's about 160 miles further down the African coast from Ceuta and is accessible by ferry from Malaga, Almeria and Motril or by plane from a handful of Spanish cities. I took the ferry there, an experience I shared in this video, and I flew back to Malaga, a flight which I reviewed in this video. Melicia is a funny old place. I'll have to dip into history and politics a little to explain what I mean, but the territory's history and politics are the reasons why I've even heard of the place. Melicia became Spanish in 1494 and has been an integral part of Spain ever since, but it is also African. Half the population is Muslim and thousands, perhaps tens of thousands of Moroccan residents cross the border every day to work. It shares a bay with the neighbouring Moroccan town of Nador, separated by that unattractive fence I featured in my intro. But it also has a significant Jewish community as well as a Hindu population. Indeed, those four communities are celebrated in this sculpture. You may see intestines, but I see four communities living in harmony. Kind of. But Milicha is Spanish. The flag flies proudly, and Spanish is the language. The Spanishness of the place was evident in other ways. Many shops closed for a siesta, meaning that most restaurants didn't open until 8 or even 9pm, which was pretty close to my bedtime on this trip. Another challenge for me as a single traveller was that the tapas restaurants were expecting diners to come in groups rather than on their own. So there was plenty of tapas available, but it came in four person servings costing 10 euros or up, rather than single servings costing three or four. I was there in very early October and it seems that the season had ended on the 30th of September. There were a few museums and tourist attractions, especially in the quite charming Old Town, but all of them were closed. I'd read that there were four squares in the old town where you could get a snack or a beer when visiting, but everything was closed when I was there. It was very pleasant to stroll around and the coastal views were quite spectacular, but it would have been much better if I'd been there a month earlier. There's also a quite substantial beach, which would be great with slightly better weather and with the neighbouring bars and restaurants open. Melicia is also known for surfing, although it wasn't exactly surfer's paradise. When I planned this trip and thought about what this video would contain, I thought I'd talk a lot about Gibraltar. I'd always thought it was hypocritical for Spain to claim sovereignty of Gibraltar whilst flatly rejecting Morocco's claims to Melicia and Ceuta. But having visited and having read a bit about the situation, I realised that things are more nuanced. 
let me elaborate as I share some more footage of the town. Melilla has been part of Spain for over 500 years. It's actually been Spanish for longer than some mainland cities such as Pamplona. It just happens to be separated from mainland Spain on a different continent. The modern state known as Morocco has only existed since 1956, so in Spanish minds there's no way that a 65-year-old country can claim sovereignty over somewhere that's been part of another country for over 500 years. Morocco counters that by pointing out that colonial hangovers shouldn't trump geographical realities. Spain also points out that Melilla is an integral part of Spain, whilst Gibraltar has never been an integral part of the United Kingdom, it's always been an overseas territory. But the reality is that the populations of Melilla and Gibraltar feel Spanish and British respectively, and overwhelmingly want to keep things as they are, and in the final analysis that's the most important thing. Melilla's location has made it a focal point in the migration crisis affecting most of Europe. Setting foot on Melilla territory means you're setting foot in Spain, and so you're in the EU. This can trigger asylum claims, not to mention passport and visa-free travel throughout the Schengen zone as far as Finland. So significant measures have been taken to keep migrants out, although attempts to storm the border are made quite regularly and can have tragic consequences. As a result, there is a significant law enforcement presence in the territory, including police, the civil guard, which has responsibility for the borders, and the military. A lot of money is spent on keeping people out of Melitia, and so it's perhaps not surprising that a lot less money is spent on bringing tourists in. I stayed at the Hotel Anfora, which was walking distance from the port. Everything is really walking distance from everything else in Melitia, but this hotel was particularly close. Being out of season paid off here, as I only paid around £40 a night. The room was quite basic and the bed was a bit lumpy, but I thought it was pretty good value for the price I paid. So I'm going to attempt to sum up my time in Melicha, direct to camera, without a script. I don't do this often and it's actually quite tricky with this place. It's not very touristy. It's the first week of October which is out of season so all of the museums are closed and I think quite a lot of the restaurants and other tourist facilities have shut down for the winter. It's probably a bit of an easier place to visit during the height of the summer months. Which brings me on to the second point, which is that it is very, very Spanish. I think most of the tourists that do come here in the summer months are going to be from Spain. So the siesta is observed, which means the shops stay open later, but the restaurants don't open till 8 or sometimes 9 o'clock. If you want to eat at 7 or 7.30, there's very, very, very few choices. Not a lot of English is spoken and that is in no way a criticism because I certainly don't expect people to speak English. But if you don't speak Spanish it does make it quite tricky to understand menus and to understand what's going on around you. The fact that very little English is spoken is a strong suggestion that very little English language tourism passes through here. But it is still a fascinating place to visit. Regular viewers of the channel would have worked out by now that I am a bit weird and I really enjoy just walking around aimlessly. I covered over eight miles yesterday exploring this place. I also enjoy quirky out of the way places that nobody else goes to. And I also enjoy borders and the weird paraphernalia that comes with them. And Melilla is excellent if you like those sorts of things. But the fact that I have been here means that you don't have to. If you're not attracted by the things I'm attracted by, the place really doesn't have a great deal to offer. But the biggest question is always whether I would come back to a place, and I think with Melicha, probably not. Might be interesting to come back in the height of summer to see how different the place feels when there are people on the beaches and when there are some extra museums and restaurants open. And I do now have a bit of an urge to go to Feuta, which is the other Spanish enclave, to see if that is any different. But when it comes to Melicha, I've been here, I've wanted to come here for years and years and I've achieved that goal. It's a fascinating place that I have enjoyed visiting despite the difficulties, but I don't think I'll be back anytime soon. So thanks for watching, please give this video a like if you enjoyed it. Please leave me a comment, have you been here and would you consider it after watching this video? Please subscribe if you're new, and if you'd like to support what I'm doing more directly, a link to a Patreon account will be found in the description below. So thanks again, and I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye.